Hello and welcome. This is a quick demo to show my students uh, how to build a Java project for those who have never worked with Java before. So I've launched Eclipse, uh, got the standard Eclipse editor up and running. We can see for those who've been working on Android projects, I've got them down the left hand side still. I can go File and choose New. At the top here I have Java Project. If you don't have that, you may need to go into Other and select that for yourself. But I do have it here, so I'll go to Java Project. And I'm going to describe it so awesome assignment. Uh, any Java version you want is OK. Uh, 1.6 is probably the easiest if you got it available. And I'll click Finish. And then in a second, here we go. On the left-hand side, we can see the awesome assignments come up. You'll note there's no files to start with, so I'm going to right-click on that. Go Source, or New, and then I'm going to say I want a new class. I'm going to bring this in a little so I can fill in some of the details. I'm going to call this, for example, let's make a box. So it's a box, and I'm going to give it a public static void main. So this will be the main function that is part of uh, this class, so we can actually execute it. Click OK, or finish, and we can see my box class comes up. Now I can fill in some code here. If I want to print to the screen, it's just going to be system dot out dot println and I can put in anything I like so of course we're gonna say hello world I'll save that they actually go away and I can right click on the file and down you may be off screen I can click on run as and select a Java application so run as Java application and we can see here the console pops up with the text hello world so let me just quickly finish this. It's going to be a box, so we're going to need an x and a y point. So int x, int y, going to go to constructor. So public box int uh, the x, just to keep it simple. Int the y, and x equals the x, y equals the y. Let's add one function. Uh, let's give it a public, and it's going to return, say, an int, because we are dealing with ints. And let's call it get area. And it'll just return x times y. So, probably a pretty good start. So, very simple class. So, I can use it. I'll go down here. I'll instantiate one. Give me a box. We'll call it b1. It's going to pass in two arguments 10 and 15. And then I can do a system dot out dot print line here with a uh, we're print area equal plus b1 dot get area like that now of course I've done a C style instantiation here it doesn't actually work too much C for me or C plus plus rather so I need to say for my object instead of actually doing it that way I need to give it a new box so Java style requires us to actually create a new one. So now when I right click on this again, go back to run as Java application, we see here that my area is 150. So no surprises there. So that's the basics on how to write a Java class complete with a very small little main inside of that class. Now of course we're going to use JUnit testing, so I'm going to go back here, right click on my project, select new, and then from the list there should be a JUnit test case. So JUnit test case, you may need to go to other and select uh, Java JUnit for that. So now I'm going to say it's part of this. Importantly, I want to go to JUnit 3. That's what we're working with. And let's call it initial tests. You can call it anything you like. I'm going to create a setup method just to uh, conform to what we've seen in the lecture. And click finish. It's going to add something to the build path. That's fine. So now I've got my uh, class. Now remember, this class is going to be instantiated every time I create my, uh, every time I'm going to run a test method. So we're going to give it a box. Uh, yeah, let's call it mbox. And then inside my setup, I'm going to create an instance of it. So mbox is equal to new box. And let's say 1015. Why not? So I'm going to write some test code here. So remember, it's going to be public void, start with the word test, put whatever you like in here, and now we've got the basics for a JUnit test. So in here I can fill in what I want, so let's just say uh, print area, 
and I'm going to save a bit of time, so I'm just going to go back to my previous code here. Well, sorry, I don't want to do that, of course. I want to get the area. Int, so area equals, I'm going to use the M box, which we've instantiated above, dot get area. And now I'm going to use a JUnit assert. So I'm just going to stick with uh, assert equals. Should be able to autocomplete. You can see the list comes up when I go to autocomplete. And we're going to just equal Q. And the expected value, well, 10 times uh, 15 is 150. And the actual value is going to be area. So now I can run this. I can right click on it and go down to run as. And it'll give me the JUnit test. It may ask me what would I like to run it as. I'm going to say use a specific configuration and the Eclipse JUnit launcher. It's not, of course, an Android project, so I just stick with the Eclipse one. It runs, and we can see on the left I've got a green bar. So I green bar that. Uh, just to prove that it's running, I'm going to do an assert uh, true, false. Or, probably better, instead of doing all of that, I'm going to replace that with a fail. Just leave them both in, why not? And then I can go over to the left-hand side, rerun all tests. It reruns the tests, and now I can see that my test fails. The first thing that failed was this line. Remove those, and I'm back to a running test. So that's the quick uh, show of what to do with that. Um, the other thing I'm going to want to do is you're going to want to run with um, exceptions. So let's add a new function here. Uh, let's call it uh, so it's going to be public void set area or set size, why not? Int the x, int the y. Now, in Java, we often have to explain what it's going to do. If it's going to throw an exception, so we're going to say this throws, and the parameter, or what it's going to throw is an invalid parameter exception. This is defined inside of Java. I think I didn't type that right. Let me just copy and paste from another source so I can save us all some headache. Of course, it's not going to know what that is, so I go to Control-1, Import from Java.Security. And now I can say, let's say we want all dimensions to be positive. So if the x is less than 0 or the y is less than 0, then what I want to do is I want to throw an exception. So I'm going to, in this case, throw a new invalid control space, a new invalid uh, parameter exception. That is immediately going to cancel or end my um, function. So once I've done that, I can set the values. I happen to have that code exactly up here. So I'll copy that back into here. Now let's go and test it. So go back into my JUnit test. I can then say public void test uh, set area, or set size. Remember, I don't have to call this because the JUnit's automatically going to test it for me, or call it for me. So here, I've already got my object, so I can call mbox.setSize, and let's set the size to 2 comma 3. Now when I actually call getArea, I'll just copy the code, we do some quick math, and decide that the area should, in this case, be 6. Copy the get area gain. OK. So that should be fine. Written a couple lines of code. Run it. It passed. The green bar on the left. Now I'm going to test it so that it fails. So let's actually, I will copy and paste this into a new one. Set size fails. And I'm going to set to negative 1. Here we should actually get an exception. So I need to, if I don't catch it now, if I just run it, it's going to give me a fail. I'll move this over just a little. You can see that it has one error, rather, because we didn't catch an exception. It crashed it. So what I need to do is I need to catch it. So I'm going to say catch, uh, pardon me, I'm going to try and then surround what's going to throw the exception. They try, and then I'm going to catch, put in brackets what it is I'm going to catch. So I'm going to catch, and I think I've got it still, I'll grab it back in my clipboard. I'm going to catch one of these, and I'll call it E. 
put it into uh, braces there. Doesn't know what we're talking about. Control 1 and import it. Now, how do I test that this actually threw the exception? At the moment, I'm simply going to catch the exception. It's going to work. I need to put in something after this. So I'm going to put a fail in here. Now, whenever it throws the exception, it's going to skip my fail. If it doesn't throw an exception, it's going to, uh, the fail is going to be executed. So here, that worked OK. Imagine that I got rid of this problem. We make it plus 2 instead. Save the file, rerun. And here, it now fails because it hits my fail command there. So that's a quick demo of how to create the project, how to run it with JUnit and create the JUnit tests, and then even how to handle exceptions.